For me, I think a lot of planning and thinking goes into waxing. Like, am I gonna do it myself? Am I gonna let a professional do it? Uh, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable because you need to lay there, coochie all open and things for people to wax it for you. Like, I don't know. what is up and welcome back to my channel it is your girl Jennifer Ross back at it again with yet another video today's video is gonna be another episode of the new series on my channel which is called girl talk and today we're gonna talk about a body hair removal I know body hair is something completely normal it is there for a reason um, because it is to keep the body warm it is to protect the body it has it has a reason why it's there but nonetheless some of us just go the extra mile to get rid of it and today I'm just gonna give you like a one-on-one -on -one, like body hair removal tips and tricks and things you know um, and just if you already know all of this information that is completely fine then you are ahead of the game but if you are just a person that just like grabs the razor every time and you don't really like it then this video is for you because you can definitely think about other ways of body hair removal and also sometimes it is good to refresh you know your routine a little bit so that's what this video is all about okay but if this is the first time you are seeing my face then I would love to have you subscribe so make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel you know the drill and we are gonna go ahead and get into this video So first things first, I want to start off with a little disclaimer. I do want to say that body hair, once again, is very normal. If you are someone who decides to keep your body hair, to not trim it, to not remove it, that is completely fine. This video is not meant to offend anyone or to tell you what to do. Um, that is not it. Do whatever you want and what you prefer and what you feel comfortable with. That is completely fine. We respect everybody over here. you a few principles for whatever method you decide to go with I think it's very important to do your research try to figure out what works for you what is the most comfortable to you what is the easiest thing to keep up with because not every method is easy for everyone and I just think it is important to do something that you feel the most comfortable with then I think it is very very important to use the right product for the right body part. For example, you have like these creams that you can use to remove hair on your legs. Different body parts need different approaches, so therefore um, a cream that serves for the legs may be more aggressive than a cream that is for the face. And also remember that your skin is the largest organ of your whole body and you do want to be gentle and careful with it. Then the next principle is to take your time. There is no rushing when it comes to removing a body hair. Make sure you take your time to prep. Don't sleep on the prepping girl. It is important whether you are going to be shaving, waxing, or epilating, exfoliating is always a part of body hair removal. So never sleep on that. And however you decide to do the body hair removal, always remember to cool afterwards. You can do this with just some simple cold water, but always make sure that you cool your skin after you have been removing body hair. So shaving is the most common way of body hair removal. People have been doing it for decades, to be honest. Everybody and their mama has tried it at least once. And it is fast, it is easy, and razors are really, really cheap. But nonetheless, there are a few tips and tricks for better results, because even though the shaving doesn't last up very, very long, it depends on your hair growth, of course, but most of the time the results they don't last very very long after two to three days you will see the hair start growing back the key to good shaving is planning so make sure you never sleep 
on prepping your skin before shaving. You want to make sure that you soak the skin. Two to three minutes is enough, but this just makes sure that the hairs get hydrated and this just boosts up your results to 60% because it makes the hairs so much easier to cut. So always make sure you soak the skin before you start shaving. And whatever you do, never dry shave because it is just not worth it. Um, this just ca can cause irritation, it can cause friction, it can cause dry skin. You can just cut yourself real fast with this. Like it is just not worth your time and the effort. Like just skip on that, wear something in which you can see the body hair. If that is the case, like girl, mm -mm. we anybody got time for that, okay? The next is the razor itself. Make sure you change your blades regularly, or if you are using disposable razors, make sure you use a new one for every time that you're gonna shave your body, because a blunt um, blade, it can increase friction, and that can lead to skin irritation, razor bumps, like a whole bunch of things that you don't wanna deal with, and it just can cause you to itch. It's, it's just not a fun time. So make sure you change that up regularly and also make sure you don't leave your razor in the shower because um, bacteria they just love moisty areas and in your shower it's always moist so the next time you're gonna use your razor you will basically be shaving your whatever area with bacteria on it and spreading it so that's not a good idea just keep it somewhere where it's dry Another tip is also to not put too much pressure when shaving. Just try to glide over it really, really slowly. And also a very good tip is to use a men's razor because these just tend to be sharper and you can get the job done like way, way quicker. And to help the razor glide really, really fast and make the whole process way easier, make sure you use some shaving foam or some conditioner. I tend to just use conditioner mostly because I just think it works so, so well. It just hydrates all the hairs, like make them like really, really soft and just easy to remove. So when I go over it with my razor, it just glides off. And always make sure that you shave in the direction that the hair grows, because if you shave in the opposite directions, you can cause ingrown hairs, which we will get to very quick, okay? So the first thing you can do in order to prevent um, ingrown hairs is scrubbing your skin gently though. Gently because doing this makes sure that the upper layer of the skin gets removed and this is just crucial when removing the hair because if you don't do this it will stay there and it will just clog the hair follicle which will cause ingrown hairs. And if you have sensitive skin, just make sure you use a gentle exfoliator so you don't like cause a whole lot of irritation. And the next thing is to soak your skin. Two to three minutes is enough, but just in lukewarm water to hydrate the hairs and make it easier to remove them. <laughs> A lot of us have experienced this before. I am absolutely one of those people. But after shaving, sometimes you can have like these red little bumps, like razor bumps. They can look like acne, they can be a little itchy. Don't worry, this is just folliculitis. I hope I pronounced that right. And this is basically just an infection of the hair follicle. Um, this is not a pleasant situation at all, but if it's something very severe, I do recommend you consult a doctor because you will need that. And this video is not going to be that, it's not going to cut it for you. So make sure you look for professional help if that is the case, if it's severe. But if it's not that severe, then there are a few little things that you can do. So when you, once you have those red little bumps, it is the best to cool the skin a little bit with a cold water. You can use a cold compress. Basically just let the skin cool. And what you can do afterwards is moisturize your skin. Make sure to not do like a circular motion, but rather just moisturize like this by just wiping it in the direction or smooth it out in the direction 
of the hair growth. This is way, way um, more gentle for the red little bumps and this motion just irritates it even more. So make sure you just do this instead of this. Now, waxing is also becoming more and more popular, whether it is done by a professional or at home. Uh, some of us just like for the hair to stay away as long as possible because the results of waxing, they are there, okay? Sometimes the hair can stay away for about four weeks, so that is amazing, of course. But nonetheless, it still takes a little bit of prepping. So the first thing is to make sure your skin is clean. Make sure you exfoliate, but exfoliate 24 hours before you wax because this can just also cause a little bit of irritation and you just don't wanna like exfoliate and like wax immediately. That's too much for the skin to handle in one time. So just do it 24 hours before you go wax. And also make sure that the product is suitable for the area you are gonna use it for. With waxing, you can choose between sugaring and wax. Um, sugaring is a more natural way because it's basically just, as the name says it, sugar. And wax can just contain a whole lot, a lot of chemicals and things, but it's up to you to do your research before you decide uh, on which one you're gonna go with. So always make sure you do your research and make sure that the product is gentle for the area you're gonna use it for. And if you decide to just do it at home, then make sure you read the instructions carefully and you follow them up. Like don't go do anything by yourself. Like thinking like, I got this, don't do it. Like you can burn yourself, you can like irritate your skin really bad. Like read the instructions and just follow them, okay? And whatever you do when removing the hair, just make sure you pull the wax strip like in one movement real quick because otherwise the wax will pull and it will not give you the full effect which will cost you that you will have to go over it again and this will irritate your skin and irritate your skin and we're not trying to have that going on, like, mm-mm. So now it's time for a little waxing versus shaving. The first one is the results, okay? So with waxing, you have just longer lasting results because sometimes it can be up to three to four weeks and in some cases, maybe even six weeks. But this, of course, depends on your hair growth, whether your hair grows back fast or not. But that can be the case for some people. But with shaving, on the other hand, it doesn't last that long. Um, you will have to reshave in three to four days. I just choose to do it one time a week. Um, whatever the growth may be, I may have like these little pieces of hair. I don't care that much about it, but I just do it once a week. But the results are not very long lasting. You will have to do this at least once a week. Then another thing is the hair growth itself. The hair, when you are waxing, it grows back thinner. And with shaving, it just grows back thicker, darker, and sometimes even coarser. Now waxing itself can be a little exfoliating since it just removes the hair completely. And it also, at the same time, smoothens the skin. And with shaving, on the other hand, this can just be irritating, it can cause razor bumps, it can cause a whole lot of problems. Um, so, and waxing over time, it decreases hair growth. You, your hair will grow back like slower, um, while as with shaving, your hair will maintain the same growth or it will increase the growth. Now I know what you're thinking. Everything points in the direction as if Waxing is the way to go. It depends on how you see it though, because honestly, for me, I think a lot of planning and thinking goes into waxing. Like, am I gonna do it myself? Am I gonna let a professional do it? Once I find a professional, um, is that person doing it how exactly how I want? Uh, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable because you need to lay there, coochie all open and things for people to wax it for you. Like, I don't know. I think a lot of thinking and planning goes into that. 
and you need to find someone that you feel comfortable with so that is just a lot of things to think about in my opinion and then there's also the ouch factor because it can hurt a little bit okay you will get used to it as you go but the pain will be there it will be there and it will be get less every time that you go and every time that you maintain it but in the beginning it will hurt while as with shaving it is easy it is cheap it is convenient and nothing beats like a shower where you can just exfoliate shave and be done with it for a few days you know so i guess it all comes to what you feel comfortable with what works for you and just doing your research on whatever you want to do and what method you want to go with last but not least i want to talk a little bit about epilating because that is also a very popular one especially for the eyebrows tweezing is also a form of epilating but you also have a little device i used to have one from brown that i could use for my whole body um, the difference between the two is that like the tweezers of course they get rid of the hair one by one and then the epilator it gets rid of multiple hairs in one motion and then you also have like yarn some people just remove it with yarn especially for the eyebrows i used to do that a lot when i used to live in rotterdam so that is also an option and it's also a form of epilating but with whichever form of epilating you decide to go there is still a little bit of preparation that you need to do with epilating you can do dry epilating if you decide to do that on your legs for example make sure you take a towel a dry towel and brush it over the hairs this will make sure that the hairs will stand up and they will be easier to pick up by the device um, and if you decide to go with for the eyebrows for example make sure you soak the hairs a little bit by just putting a damp towel on them and making sure they are clean a clean surface is always the way and also when scrubbing your face make sure you just exfoliate around the eyebrows as well when you're finished always make sure to wait a few hours before you apply anything on the area that you just epilated because with root removal you always want to wait a little bit since the hair is just plucked from the root it will be a little open so it takes some time to go back to its normal state but um, you can always put a little cold pack on your eye, on your eyes, on your eyebrow, or you can put a little bit of cold water on a towel and keep it on top of it to just help it smoothen down. Okay, amiga, that is it for today's video. That is all the tips and tricks that I have for you today for this body hair removal one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, of course, there are a few methods that I did not discuss in this video, um, but I wanted to talk about the things that I have experienced with myself. Um, I did also try like a hair removal cream before. I am not too much of a fan of that because I must be honest, it smells very, very chemical and um, it also makes my skin burn a little bit. It causes a lot of irritation for me. So I also want to say like which my preference is right now. I just do shaving. Um, I did do sugaring and waxing in the past, but uh, the results were nice. That's for sure. But to me, it just took too much planning and effort and things. So I just do shaving now once a week. And once again, body hair is very, very normal. It's up to you whether you want to keep it, whether you want to remove it, and how you want to remove it. It's not anyone's business to decide what you need to do. And this video is in no way, shape, or form meant to tell you what you have to do with your body. Okay? But that is it. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!